and welcome to the Spotlight with Sarah. We are in studio today along with my beautiful co-host and friend, Lorena Monroe. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of your show. And today it's going to be an amazing show. It is because have you guys ever met or heard of a space architect? Have you ever seen one? Well, you're looking at one right now, Mr. Sam Jimenez. He is a space architect. And so what does a space architect do? Well, just like it says, uh, we uh, design uh, buildings and, uh, and habitats and uh, space stations for how they live in space. Wow, that's uh, really cool. Also for how to live on the on lunar uh, surfaces or Mars. So wow. Planetary architecture. So where are we going to yeah. live? We could live in <laughs> caves <laughs> on the moon or Mars. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. And you do it both on the educational side and on the commercial side. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. We have two organizations. Mm -hmm. One is called the WEX Foundation. Mm -hmm. And it is focused on providing STEM education for students in this uh, San Antonio community area, uh, learn, learning about space exploration. And then the, we also have a company called Exarc, Exploration Architecture Corporation, that is uh, designing technologies for how to uh, live on the lunar surface and build habitats and build uh, bases and landing pads as well. We take that commercial program as the framework for what our, what our students will learn about. So they. They actually are, uh, we treat them as consultants, junior consultants, mm -hmm. essentially. And we give them problems that we have on the commercial side that kind of help us solve, you know, uh, yeah. and give them uh, projects to work on as well. Education mm -hmm. is as limit as the sky, Mr. Jimenez. Wow, that is just really, really interesting. And I do understand that now you are collaborating with Sam Set San Antonio, our Museum of Science and Technology, right here in the heart of San Antonio, Texas, at the port of San Antonio. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because that is very interesting, what you guys got to offer. Yeah, so in uh, 2016, we received a, a NASA grant from NASA to start our program called LCATS, Lunar Caves Analog Test Sites. And in that program, we take students to local caves around the area uh, to learn how to go and do field measurements like a scientist. They learn how to build uh, science instruments and then take those into the caves and do measurements in the field. And that program uh, is also in conjunction with the University of Texas at San Antonio. Uh, we've, since then, we've received a second grant uh, to take that same program in a national level. When we received that program, we decided to hook up with SAMSAT and bring in uh, uh, their education programs, their STEM programs, to coincide with what we're doing on the space side. Sarah, yeah. can you believe all of this is happening right here in San Antonio, Texas? I mean, it's amazing that you can go into the caves here on Earth and, and take the measurements, mm -hmm. but that's what you do, like if you were living on the moon, you would be doing something like that too. Yeah, so, you know, the, the caves are, are found in all the planetary bodies. Uh -huh. uh, you know, the largest cave that we have here on Earth is a, a cave in Vietnam. And uh, the, the caves on the moon are twice the size of that cave. Wow. And on Mars, even larger. And the reason caves are important uh, for, for lunar habitation or Mars habitation is they provide protection from the radiation environment oh. and the micrometeorite environment. And they're also a, a benign temperature so that you don't have the fluctuations of the day and night cycles of the moon. I see. And that's helpful for engineering designs. That's fascinating. Well. So uh, what age students do you target or, or come to these programs? Right, we begin with middle school students. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, we begin them in the, in the uh, area of uh, eighth grade through high school, mm -hmm. wow. uh, and they uh, they end up uh, uh, starting with us for four years. Actually, it's a three-year program. How long yeah. is the program? Uh, so they begin. It's a three-year program for the students. We the, the actual uh, grant is five years. Mm, okay. We had our first year for planning. Mm -hmm. uh, the students go. Uh, they actually have to make a commitment to us for three years. Oh. Uh, them and the parents as well, because it's a it's a pretty rigorous uh, advanced course, mm -hmm. uh, where they meet meet. Uh, um, two Saturdays per, per month mm -hmm. for 16 Saturdays, essentially, during the, during the school year. Oh, wow. It's an out-of-school out program, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that, during that time they go through the first year, uh, what we call remote sensing year, where they learn about uh, remote sensing technologies for, you know, for uh, doing uh, uh, measurements from a distance, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, the second year they go into the robotic phase, where they build robots, and, they, and we have a simulated lunar surface at the University of Texas at San Antonio at UTSA mm -hmm. where they put their, their robots that they build in teams 
and they test them out on, a, on an actual simulated surface of lunar simulant. Mm -hmm. uh, the third year, they go into the architecture phase, where they learn about space architecture, mm -hmm. learn about the building of uh, habitats and the, uh, mm -hmm. the site development, how to build a landing pad. Uh, we've been have, have some students that are building 3D printers for us as well, and some unique 3D printers, and uh, we're working on actually getting a student payload onto the lunar surface one of the programs. Really? We had, so we, our model is this way, is we have a, a tiered approach of mentorship. We have scientists and engineers that, that mentor our, uh, our program assistants that are students from uh, grad, undergraduate students, uh, graduate students, and they in turn mentor the high school students and the middle school students. Mm. And that, that, uh, that approach gives everybody a, a chance to have a hands-on uh, application to, the, to a particular project. Mm -hmm. One of the first projects we're working on is a lunar dust instrument. We want to measure the, uh, the lunar dust on the lunar surface so we understand the dust accumulation rates for in case that uh, you know, uh, dust falls on, on the solar panels you know, or dust gets in the, uh, in the, uh, to the gears. Mm -hmm. What's the rate of accumulation? And this little instrument, it's no bigger than the palm of your hand, uh, will measure that accumulation, with, accumulation rate with a uh, unique technology we have. Mm -hmm. The students are part of that. They learn about how, to, how that works and how that how to take those measurements. Uh, at, the, at the middle school, high school level, then the uh, graduate, undergraduate students are actually building the instrument and then, uh, then doing a prototype right now. And then eventually they will get, them, uh, uh, get a flight model put together and put it on one of the, uh, the new commercial uh, lunar service providers that are going to the moon in the next couple of years with small payloads. And wow. we'll, we'll put that student payload to the moon as one of the, one of the projects we'll give them. That's fascinating, isn't it, Lorena? Yeah. It's just amazing yeah. stuff. Sarah, how would you like to go to the moon? I would. Hey, yeah. I'll give me a ticket. That's an amazing <laughs> opportunity, you know, just mm -hmm. learning everything. I mean, you know, one thing is for you to go outside and just look at the moon and hear about it. And another thing is actually have a, having somebody right here at studios talking about it that he is hands-on. And that's our, that's our motto. We want the students to be hands-on as well. We want them to actually be in the field doing, doing projects, building as well, not just learning uh, through book learning, although we give them that, but we want them to put it into practice. So I understand, Mr. Jimenez, that kicking off 21, you are going to be doing a lot right here at the Port San Antonio with Sam's Hat San Antonio. So I want you to tell us a little bit about that. How is that taking place? Well, you know, San Antonio, uh, and, and here in the port itself, uh, it's a real unique community of technology and technologists, and we want to leverage that as well. There's another company here called Reconpoint that's doing, doing robotics, and uh, they're working on taking a robot into buildings and learning how to measure the building, do the, the me building measurements. Well, we want to take that same robot and, and uh, put it into a cave and learn how to measure the cave. So we know the interior of the caves, and we know what to design for as well. That's fascinating. And, uh, and so how far out do you see uh, us having a colony on the moon? Well, I think uh, um, it'll be probably by the end of the decade, it won't be a colony. It'll be the first time we'll be back there on a, on a permanent basis. NASA wants to get back to the moon by 2024, mm -hmm. for the first woman on the moon. And uh, so that boots on the ground. <laughs> Raise your hand. We, we believe our students are going to be uh, the students that will be on the lunar surface or on Mars in the next generation. Wow. They're the next generation. Incredible. We call them the Artemis generation. Wow, yeah, that's fascinating. Now, how do kids get involved in this? So uh, um, we, we take students from, uh, there's a program here in San Antonio called PREP, uh, Pre-Freshman Engineering. And uh, we, that was the initial uh, intake of our students. They had to be part of that program first. I went to the prep. Well, there you go. Okay, I'm eligible. <laughs> You're eligible. There you, go. <laughs> you, have to be, you have to go through that program first, and then we, yeah. take, we take the best out of that program, uh -huh. and they, go, they come into our program. Yeah. And, uh, but now, now with the COVID and all, all the uh, things that are going on, we will uh, just take a, an, an online application that uh -huh. we would provide as well. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, wow. You know what? Education is like the sky, no limits. It's incredible, that is incredible, Mr. Jimenez. You know, I've heard about you from uh, my husband, David Monroe, and he speaks so highly of you. He says, you know what, Lorena, Mr. Jimenez is doing so much uh, for all the students out there. Everyone that wants to learn here is the opportunity with Mr. Jimenez. Well, and now you. with mm -hmm. all the different uh, courses and everything that's taking place, it's easier now. 
Yeah, it is. Uh, we, uh, of course, we've had to go virtually with the, with the pandemic, with our courses and whatnot. And it was, actually, it was a kind of an opportunity that we found out because we can, we can get more students involved uh, through the virtual environment. And, uh, and, and we we're also devising uh, video uh, programs for them to learn at home, being able to take find things they find around the house and build, a, you know, build an engineer and model of something that we would uh, tell them to go and try and do as well. So yeah. education is at the tip of your fingers. Yes, it is. And, and you know, we, what we want to do is actually make San Antonio a space community. That's kind of the goal here is to make San Antonio known as a space community. You, you think of San Antonio, well, there's space things going on there. And we have uh, uh, ourselves in a neat, unique position geographically because at the tip of Texas and Brownsville, they have SpaceX, you know, building their, their, their starship and there's a spaceport down there. And then we have uh, Houston over, over, over at, the, at the port of Houston. They're building their own spaceport there. And San Antonio fits right in the middle of all that. And we believe that the next generation will be part of this, this Texas Gulf Coast mm -hmm. of space activity going on and happening here. And San Antonio will be part of that. Well, that's yeah. an exciting yeah. thought. I mean, we, I mean, more than anything, you know, we're from the San Antonio area, so we love to see good things happening here in South Texas, and we appreciate that people like yourselves, with your experience, I mean, you've worked with NASA, you've worked on the commercial side of space architecture, bringing your knowledge and sharing your knowledge with the young community here in San Antonio and South Texas. Um, we can definitely all benefit from that, yeah. so we appreciate your work and your time and your commitment and working with SAMSAT to I mean, help and reach out to the community yes. here in South Texas. And we look forward to a, a, a long relationship with SAMSAT. It's a, it's a really unique, we're, actually the, uh, the Innovation Center that's, that's coming up pretty soon is going to really take things off the ground here, sort of, you know, literally, <laughs> so to speak, in terms of that, uh, that program being uh, put in place when that building comes up. Mm -hmm. So, Can't yeah. wait to see all the good things to yes, come. Yeah. We are excited, Sarah. We are so excited and we are so grateful to the Port of San Antonio, to all the sponsors, to everyone that has really, really, you know, believed in everything that's taking place with SAMSAT, with Mr. Jimenez, with everything that he's doing. But that's what it takes, Sarah. It takes a team of people like Mr. Jimenez on board to come and make a difference. And letter that you know is right here in our own backyard, beautiful San Antonio. So to find out more about the program, you can look at the wexfoundation.org and there is an online application there, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, um, the next class will begin for next year. This because mm -hmm. the COVID, we won't have our, our uh, cohort this year. Mm -hmm. uh, by the uh, summertime of next year, maybe by spring, go to uh, wexfoundation.org and you'll see an application for getting into the LCATS program. That's Wonderful. Right. Yeah. That's good to hear that. Thank well, thank you very much for being with us Pleasure here mind. today. Mm -hmm. We appreciate all your information and sharing all your knowledge with our viewers. And thank you all for watching The Spotlight with Sarah. If you have a story to tell, if you want to share a, a message, uh, you want to market your business or work on your branding, we are here to help you here at Bonita Productions with our different platforms. So we want to thank you for watching The Spotlight with Sarah. We have more shows to bring you coming up very soon, and we appreciate Appreciate you being with us here today. Mr. Thank Jones. you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hasta la vista.